welcome back to my channel dear friends as a continuation to my yesterday's lecture on fitzgerald's novel the great gatsby today i shall be dealing with some biographical details of the writer not although not completely i will not be speaking completely about the biographical details i will <coughs> i will choose a few incidents from fitzgerald's life that were related in the process of making this particular novel and later i will be speaking about the plot line that is the story of the novel the great gatsby so the famous writer of the 20th century america francis scott key fitzgerald was born in 1896 and he died in 1940 he belonged to a generation called the last generation of the roaring 20s i have already spoken to you about last generation yesterday the other writers who belong to this generation were hemingway gertrude stein t s eliot ezra pound jean rees and sylvia beach <coughs> he wrote plenty of the novels in his lifetime and he established himself as a novelist when he was roughly about uh, 20 years old 20 22 years old his important novels are these the following this side of paradise the beautiful and the damned third novel which is considered as his magnum opus or the greatest work the great gatsby fourth novel tender is the night and the fifth one which remained unfinished during the year of his death is the last tycoon <clears throat> <clears throat> there are few episodes from the life of mr fitzgerald which are important as a background to this particular novel the great gatsby in the year 1917 he dropped university education in order to join the world war so he joined us army and he gained some experience as second lieutenant in the us army during the world war 1 this particular episode is very similar to two characters in the novel one is nick and the other one is j gatsby who also happened to be one of the uh, army men during the first world war the second important aspect we need to consider is he had a girlfriend called zelda so the story of this uh, the, this love story between zelda and uh, fitzgerald is important when we look at the process of the novel the great gatsby in the novel great gatsby there is also a class clash in the beginning when j gatsby is a young man and when he was working in the us army he did not have enough money or rather he belonged to a poor class of family that's why he could not marry his girlfriend daisy in the same way there is a similarity of every uh, episode in the life of fitzgerald also fitzgerald has had this girlfriend called zelda and uh, when he proposed to marry this woman her father rejected him as a suitor because he did not have enough money or rather he did not belong to the upper class society to which zelda herself belonged so rejected by the girlfriend and her father fitzgerald goes on to establish himself the achievement of higher social status becomes the only aim in his life until he marries zelda later so in pursuit of money and fame our writer fitzgerald <coughs> tried to become a writer he tried his hand at novels and short stories and eventually fortunately he became a successful novelist and when he became a successful novelist 
because of his popularity he could earn a lot of money and he could aspire the rich lifestyle of the people living in the roaring 20s so after getting successful as a novelist he settled for some years in the most aristocratic area of united states of america that is called as the long island which is near to new york city where all these aristocratic families had settled down and they were living a very lavish and luxurious lifestyle and eventually when he married zelda he could give her the kind of lifestyle which she was living before her marriage so after spending some more years in the long island he moved to hollywood where his friend had called him to stay for some years in 1926 he moved to hollywood and started working for the american film industry he wrote scripts for the films and during this period he also had a love affair with louis morgan as a compensation for the uh, mental illness of his wife zelda unfortunately zelda had become a mental patient she was suffering with schizophrenia and that is why Fitzgerald found a resort in the love affair with Louis Morgan when he was in Hollywood. So after some years, he moves back from Hollywood and again establishes himself as a writer, a famous American writer, novelist. Then another important aspect we need to remember about <coughs> Fitzgerald is that he died at a very early age. he died just when he was 44 years old he died of a heart attack the main reason behind his heart attack being that the fact that he was an addict to alcohol which is another common streak of characters found in the lost generation the people in the lost generation were either addict to one of these habits or they were either addict to the un antisocial ways of earning money so <clears throat> there was one or the other addiction that had been a part of the characteristic of their lifestyle but we need to remember this writer for the greatest novel that he has ever written that is the great gatsby which is in part parallel to his own personal life or rather autobiographical elements can be found out some uh autobiographical elements we can trace in this novel through the character of great gatsby or it is what we call as j gatsby even his girlfriend daisy in the uh, in the novel was also inspired by his wife zelda so these are the important aspects related to the life of fitzgerald we need to remember before understanding the novel then coming to the novel in particular this novel i would like to brief it once again before i go into the plot of the novel i would like to just brief you about the history of this novel so this novel was written by scott fitzgerald and we know that it was published in 1925 and fitzgerald was inspired to write this novel because he had seen the life of rich and aristocratic people living in the long island he had been a close observer of the lavish luxurious and hedonistic lifestyle of these people all these things which he had seen from close quarters had inspired him had motivated him to represent the same lifestyle in the novel the great gatsby and after spending some years in the long island even fitzgerald himself felt that this lifestyle this lavish lifestyle which americans considered as the dream life or the american dream was not at all dream like it was rather a disillusionment it led to lots of problems like moral degradation of the society youths becoming addicts to alcohol and losing their lives at a very early age and then also the decadence moral decadence 
in the society so by the time he moved out of long island he had already realized that this pursuit of american dream had been a failure had been only a disillusionment for the generation who was living in the roaring 20s who were just behind money and materialistic pleasures so the life which he had seen from the close angles when he lived in long island had inspired him to write this novel the great gatsby then it is considered as his magnum opus or his the greatest work this novel the story of this novel is set in uh, fictional towns two fictional towns called east egg and west egg these are small islands imaginary islands of uh, they they form a part of the long island east egg and west egg both are populated by highly aristocratic people and their lifestyle is extremely luxurious and some part of the novel happens also in new york city and in between east tech west tech and new york there is an area called the valley of ashes some part of the story happens also in this area this area particularly is full of filth and the dirt of the city of the new york city and this is the place where the it is like slum area the not rich people or not so wealthy people live in this area which is dirty which is polluted so in a way he has also tried to show the by product of heavy industrialization we usually find that whenever there is an industrial growth in a town we usually see that slum areas also grow and in this novel some part also happens in the slum area called the valley of ashes then it is by some critics it is considered as a cautionary tale regarding the american dream so they wanted to say that it is not the real pursuit of american dream american dream was meant to give people something more than just materialistic pleasures and hedonism but the believe uh, but the people got satisfied only at the material level of richness this novel was not well received by the uh, by the critics and the readers during the lifetime of fitzgerald but it became very famous and it got lots of popularity across the world only after the second world war as i said it also contains some autobiographical elements the character of daisy was inspired by his own girlfriend and later his own wife zelda and then the character of great um, j gatsby has some similarities to fitzgerald himself so this is another important aspect we need to understand so now we need to understand whenever we study any novel whenever we make a detailed analysis of a novel we usually consider the aspects like plot and then the characters and then the themes and sub themes the last part that we that is important for study of novel is the narrative analysis or the analysis of the text plot becomes very important because it is the story of the novel so i will go through a brief narration of the plot to you i hope you can understand the summary of the story in this plot so the story line goes like this there is a character called nick caraway he is himself a character as well as the narrator of the whole story he is the only narrator of the whole story so what happens is this man called nick caraway is a young man he is also aspiring to achieve the american dream and he has moved from minnesota from the central american state to the city of new york and in order to find 
some success in bond business he has settled down in in the he has settled down in the east egg oh sorry he has settled down in the part called west egg of long island so he did not have many friends in new york he was new there and he was very closely observing all the lifestyle of the people living in the east egg part and he was surprised by his neighbor his neighbor was launching huge parties uh, exuberant parties every weekend and he was living in a big mansion and that man himself was known as the great gatsby or uh, j gatsby so he used to feel surprised at the way he was organizing parties every weekend lots of guests lots of celebrities youngsters old aged people lots of people used to come to celebrate their weekend in the mansion of j gatsby he would invite so many friends from the city of new york from across many towns of america and this was a matter of surprise for nick caraway because these parties were extremely exuberant so some days pass on and nick did not have any friends in that part particularly west egg but he had some acquaintances in the east egg another part of the same island called east egg which was separated by a bay so he comes to know that his old classmate called tom buchanan is living in east egg and his wife daisy happens to be uh, a long uh, distant cousin of nick carey so once what happens is he goes to meet these people in order to get acquainted with the place he goes to their house uh, where he has a lunch and dinner party there there at the house of daisy and tom they have a nice talk and they have a guest called jordan baker jordan baker is a young woman she is beautiful to look at and she is a golf player so tom and daisy introduce jordan baker to our narrator nick caraway and thus they spend some time at tom's house during the visit to tom's house nick comes to understand that daisy and tom's marriage is not a happy marriage jordan tells uh jordan tells nick about tom's extramarital affair with a woman called myrtle myrtle wilson and thereby nick understands that tom is not a very good man he is a brutish kind of a man and that he has got extramarital affairs uh, outside his marriage with myrtle wilson and also that his marriage with daisy is not a happy one even daisy is not happy with tom but because it is the richness it is the aristocracy which has kept this marriage intact so after some time spending there nick travels to new york city with tom and on the way tom meets his girlfriend myrtle and takes her to new york in new york he has an apartment only for the sake of this love affair so that he can hide it from his wife and there myrtle wilson who belong who is who is wife of a garage owner happens to be coming from a lower society i mean lower economic society lower economic class but she is in affair with this man for his money so nick understands about this dark secret of tom's life and he also understands the hypocrisy of the aristocratic people living in this part of america so this summer as the summer proceeds nick is living in his home in west egg he has rented a house there and one night his neighbor gatsby 
invites this man Nick to his parties, one of his parties. So Nick happily goes to the party and there he is welcomed by Mr. J. Gatsby and it is here where we meet J. Gatsby for the first time in the novel. Before this, so this is in the third chapter of the novel, we meet J. Gatsby in person as a live character. Before this, there is only a mention of J. Gatsby. A lot of people keep saying about J. Gatsby and his richness. A lot of people praise him for his wonderful parties. And he seems to be some kind of a celebrity in and around New York City. So till now, Nick Caraway had only heard about his neighbor who was extremely rich man. So what happens is he did not know until then that this man, J. Gatsby, is a young, young one, young man. But when he goes and attends the party, he is surprised to see that J. Gatsby is a very young man, just of his own age. So when he goes to the party, J. Gatsby welcomes this man, welcomes Nick with a hearty feelings. He starts calling him old, uh, old sport. That's the usual term he uses for his friends. So they both meet for the first time and Gatsby wants to create a good impression on Nick. That's why he tries to become more friendly with Nick. And in the same party, this girl, Jordan Baker, has come. And after some time, J. Gatsby calls Jordan Baker to meet him in person. So... A secret, hap a secret meeting happens between Jordan and Jay Gatsby in which Jay Gatsby tells Jordan about a secret of his, from his past life. So Jordan com comes to know that Jay Gatsby and Daisy were in love with each other some 4 to 5 years ago when he was working in the army. But because he was poor then, he could not marry um, Daisy and uh, eventually Daisy had to marry Tom Buchanan who was a rich man but he also tells Jordan Jay Gatsby also tells Jordan that he is still in love with Daisy and that he has come to know that Daisy is living in the other, uh, other part called East Egg of the same island so here there is a revelation of a secret of a mysterious old story of J. Gatsby and his old lover Daisy. My, uh, eventually, Nick hears about this story from Jordan who tells him this secret and after some days, Gatsby who has earned a friendship, a good friendship with Nick he wants to uh, he wants to meet Daisy and he wants Nick's help. So he he asks Nick to arrange for a meeting between Jay Gatsby and Daisy at his home. Accordingly, Nick, who did not know anything about Jay Gatsby, presumed that Jay Gatsby is an innocent man, but he used to hear lots of rumors about Jay Gatsby, but it was not of his own concern, so he decided to be friendly to this man called J. Gatsby and he maintains this friendship until the end of the story. So what happens is, <coughs> Nick agrees to Gatsby's request and arranges for a meeting with, uh, meeting between Gatsby and Daisy. He calls up Daisy and asks her to come to his home for some for a tea in the evening, next day evening and then he does not tell that even Gatsby is coming to his home. Eventually the next day Daisy comes to Nick's house where she is surprised to meet her old lover uh, Gatsby. So they both talk for some time and they both reconciliate their feelings towards each other. In which, during this conversation, Jay comes to know that Daisy did not really uh, uh, did, did not really love Tom, 
but she had to marry because he was rich and now it was for jay gatsby to show his richness to this woman whom he had loved all the time in fact in one of his earlier meetings he clearly mentions that all this pompous all these pompous parties he is doing only for the sake of impressing daisy with his richness so they both meet and talk to each other and during this conversation they come to know the truth about daisy's marriage with tom and now jay gatsby is feeling a little confident he is feeling a little hopeful because he is rich and he can uh, bring his lover back in his own life so they both talk and they reconciliate their feelings towards each other in nick's home so they some days pass on and now gatsby invites tom and daisy along with nick and jordan to his party and in one of those parties lot of things take place lot of celebrities have come somehow daisy starts disliking the the way these parties go on and she expresses it to jay gatsby jay gatsby in order to respect her feelings decides not to have such parties anymore